my goodness. Thank you. You're live. Hi, John. Hi, Soren and John. Thank Hi there, Jackie. Where are you Hi. calling from? I'm calling from Los Angeles, California. Um, I'm an ER nurse. And I my question is about managing deep sadness and irritability. Yesterday, I was so excited to go back to work because I had done a mindfulness retreat from Spirit Rock on Zoom with John, uh, sorry, Philip Moffat. And so I was so excited for this day at work. And then I just woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Someone asked me about if I was pregnant yet and I'm suffering from or experiencing problems with that. And then one of our patients died and then I got into it with someone else at work about something completely different with a training that I'm doing. And I just found myself in such a space, such a cyclone of irritability and sadness and fear that I didn't know. And obviously we're in the ER. I can't, you know, escape and right. meditate 10 minutes and get into my body. So I'm just wondering some tips. And you're also, you're also in protective gear, right? Yeah, in in the room with the patient who was passing away, we were in protective gear. So um, it is it's tricky, and I would just love some insight on how to sort of in that moment just come back into even if physically I'm not able to really experience stillness. Yeah. Um, well, there's the moment before you you know, uh, release your irritability and the moment after you release your irritability and you can relate to both of them because a lot of the time the irritability gets out there way faster than we can recognize it and regulate it. So welcome to the club of being human, okay? And it's very important, especially for people who are long-term meditation practitioners and sit retreats and so forth, very important not to create some kind of ideal, you know, image or narrative about how now your equanimity should be so robust that no matter what comes at you, no matter what the circumstances, you'll be just a Miss Buddha incarnate or something like that. So, so the recognition of irritability and the cutting yourself some, some compassion and some slack around it is really, really valuable. And then, so after the fact, and I think this is what is more reliable, more, more uh, required for most of us is how do we uh, recover quickly? So those kinds of things can like mess you up for the whole day. And then you just like, you, you can't work at your optimal. You're not relating to people. You shut down, you're grumpy and that kind of thing. And then you feel badly about yourself, right? Big time. Or you can just see this as a kind of play of the mind. And it's all about attachment. You know, it's wanting to be a certain way, look a certain way, engage in a certain way. And as soon as you see that it's impersonal, that it's not really you, but it's like all these habits that are expressing themselves, partly because you're probably, you know, sleep deprived, partly because you're, uh, you're facing death in, in your environment, you know, moment by moment. Uh, there's all sorts of conditions that are created that, um, that make for this kind of thing. But I, I'll bet you, you know, I mean, there are a thousand people on this call. How many of us don't get irritated, especially after we're locked up in various kinds of situations where even if we love it, I mean, enough is enough. You know, you get impatient, you get tired. You're fatigued. So this is where self-compassion and kindness to yourself really come in and to understand that it's all part of the same practice, that it's very important not to idealize it and say, well, you'd be a better meditator if only you weren't so uh, irritable or there's something wrong with you or you're not a good enough meditator because if you were a really good meditator, especially after a retreat at Spirit Rock, even if it was virtual that you would just revert back to the same old same old that you never liked in the first place well <laughs> maybe that's the root problem <laughs> i'm not talking to you i'm talking with all of us that there are some core kind of 
uh, contingencies that we tend to hold on to around this emphasis I've been, you know, pointing to uh, the personal pronouns and who we think we are and the stories we build around ourselves. And when you don't take this kind of thing personally, then it's very different walk, go, walking into the ER. It doesn't mean you won't be compassionate when somebody dies or when or with yourself when you get irritated. It means exactly the opposite, that you will be much more compassion embodied rather than trying to instantiate or fabricate compassion because you know it's a good thing to do when you're really pissed off. <laughs> Thank you so very much. Thank you. And I look forward to doing an MBSR course once this is all over. I've been reading your book. Well, thank you, and, and good luck to you with the work that you're doing. Uh, it sounds like you are interfacing it some, in some way or other with, you know, frontline, you know, COVID uh, conditions or people who are, don't have COVID, but are st people still get sick, even if there's a pandemic for other causes. So just a deep bow to you for, for uh, the training that you have undergone and the, the, the profession that you've chosen uh, that's really at the moment, I mean, you know, we're all depending on you folks. So thank you. Thank you. We're all depending on you folks too. Thank you. Well, that's good to know because, you know, sometimes from this end, it's like, you know, can't I do more? You know, I'm sure we've all had that kind of feeling like, well, okay, you know, so we're taking care of what we can take care of and isolating at home or s sort of sequestering at home seems like a very, very important thing to be doing and compassionate and, you know, sort of flattening the curve and keeping ourselves safe, but really keeping others safe too, because we don't know if we are, you know, infected or not, because we can be infected for weeks before we get sick ourselves. So, but, but we tend to idealize it or oh, someone else is doing better stuff than we're doing. And, this is not very helpful. So one of the reasons that I feel like it's valuable for us to be gathering to, like this and just practicing together and inquiring mm -hmm. is really to remind ourselves of what we already know and then to carry it into this unknown, the uncertainty, because there's no map of how we should be doing this. Even the epidemiologists and the scientists, I mean, they're doing the best they can, but you know, there's like you have to have a consensus opinion, but a lot of it is what we've been emphasizing from day one, not knowing and knowing that we don't know. That's a form of intelligence when we listen deeply to that and then don't fall into an emotional reactivity that says, I've had it with this sequestering, I'm going to go out and party or, you know, something else, because that's a form of delusion that is actually dangerous. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. And good luck with everything.